Hello folks, I'm sure you probably saw my recent video on used car history checks and the amount of unrecorded write-offs that are going through with a nice green tick on them on Auto Trader saying that it's past the history checks, it's not a previous write-off and actually it has been and how we found that out. I just wanted to do a little follow-up video because one of the dealerships actually has come back and made a comment and uh, I wanted to address a few of the comments made to me in that last video. So keep watching this one to the end. I'm also doing two more checks on here for cars that are currently live on sale that again come up with a nice green tick on HPI and uh, unfortunately have a hidden history. Okay, so firstly, I guess the, the most popular comment I had on that last video, lots of people saying thanks for making it and blah, blah, blah. Really, really appreciate that. Thanks ever so much for people to take in the trouble to leave a comment like that and for giving me the thumbs up. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. And for those of you that shared the video, uh, it's massively important. And um, I just wanted as many people as possible to see that video and all those thumbs up really help and all those good comments really help. So thank you very much. Uh, secondly, a few people came back and said that other check services are available and, you know, I'm just plugging VCheck and blah, blah, blah. Firstly, VCheck's the only one I've used in I don't know how long. So I can only vouch for one that I've actually used, okay? Secondly, VCheck themselves made me aware of this and gave me a load of free checks so that I could make the video. So, obviously... I'm going to support VCheck in that and massive thanks to them because now I don't know how many people, I think that video at the current time has had about 80,000 views. That's 80,000 people potentially that have seen that and now know that that didn't know it before. So that's great. Thirdly, yes, I've got an affiliate link with VCheck, which I mentioned in the video several times. A little thing even pops up at the start to warn you that I've got some kind of sponsorship or something. I get a tiny amount of the transaction every time someone buys a check through VCheck. The minimum price one is three quid. I'm not getting rich off this, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, don't forget, this is part of my job. So hopefully you get paid for your job. Hopefully I get paid for mine. But everyone's got complete freedom of choice. Uh, number four, lots of people have mentioned other history check companies that offer this kind of information. I've never used any of them, so I, I cannot vouch for them. Yeah, several have been mentioned. One that keeps popping up is Car Vertical. From the comments I've been getting on Car Vertical, that sounds like another good one. I've never used it before, so I can't vouch for it. I can only tell you what I know, and I know VCheck to be a decent one. As long as you're getting it from somewhere, I don't really care. If you want to support my channel, use my link and get it from VCheck. Okay, then another common comment I've had is people suggesting that I set up a government petition for this and try and sort of drive that forward and things. Honestly, I haven't got the time or the inclination to do it personally. But if any of you want to do that, I'll happily give it a shout out on my channel and on my different social media channels. Speaking of social media, I still don't have enough of you following me on there. So please look for me on Twitter and Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm not a guru Jim on Instagram, not a guru three on Twitter and definitely not a guru on Facebook. Right, so now we're just going to do a couple couple more checks of cars that are currently live for sale on Auto Trader that um, I found a history on, despite the fact they've got a nice big green tick saying they've never been an insurance write-off. Then I'll take you through the comment I had from a dealership that featured in the last video. Uh, right, so um, I've just got, as I said, just got two examples here. And uh, this one's a full Fiesta, a 2018 model, 1 litre 140 ST line three door that one's on for fourteen thousand four hundred and twenty pounds which is a good price it's uh, 623 pounds below the market average and it's with evans hallshaw ford in blackburn so that's a main ford dealership it's got nine and a half thousand miles on it little one litre manual looks a very tidy little car and let's have a look uh basic history checks passed not recorded as stolen not recorded as scrapped not an insurance write-off all right so then we do our V-check, the 299 V-check, this one, this is just the basic level one. And this is where we find this bit, salvage history found. So we go to that and we get this. So they've got it as a cat n non-structural damage, okay? So cat n is a write-off, it is an insurance write-off, but it's non-structural damage. 
you can see here that's had a whack in the rear corner so that's a new bumper uh, probably a new panel there or tr and trim piece maybe a new boot deck i don't really know but as these things go it doesn't look exceptionally bad and i'm really surprised this one's a write-off in all fairness but a write-off it is and that means if it's been written off and you can find that information out so can anyone else and if it is a previous write-off and it comes to resale it should be quite a lot cheaper as a result and also it should be declared to you at the point of sale now as this is an unrecorded one the dealerships have done their bit if you like their legal bit by checking it on cap hpi and that's coming back with a nice big green tick but the point is you can find this out for three quid so should the professional car dealer have to find it out as well considering that you can find it for three quid the biggest point of all of this is that the insurance company should have to register every write-off before a car goes to salvage auction they should have to register it and at the moment it's not obligatory so they don't have to do it Next one, second one, last one, Volkswagen Sharan, Sharan or Sharon, never too sure. History check, not an insurance write-off, clear as day, no issues with that whatsoever. This one's a good price, so it's bang on market average really. So it's not cheap or anything this one. Free delivery, service history, VW warranty, blah blah blah. And they charge you a £59 administration fee, this garage as well. This is FM Motor Co Limited. Anyway, let's see what we got on this one. Oh, look at that. This has, got, this has got a couple coming up on it, look. So what have we got here? We've got two salvage histories on it. Okay, so we'll move on from that for a sec. But it's been used as a taxi, this one. Do you particularly want a car that's been used as a taxi? And then the other thing was mileage records. Let's have a look at that. All right, so this is probably something in nothing. Look, it, it went through on 2nd of April at 32,577. And then on the 8th of June, it went through at 32,500. That's just someone at the auction place or the salvage place just rounding down or up the mileage. I don't think that's anything to be concerned with. The fact it's been used as a taxi is probably not ideal. And the fact it appears to have been written off twice is probably not ideal. So let's have a look at the first one. So this one went through Sandwich in Kent. Damage to vehicle front end, minor dents and scratches. All right, so that's had a really big front end knock. And they've got this as a Cat S, okay? Airbags have gone off, as you can see. So that was on the 2nd of April. This one's on the 8th of June. And it's got no category on this one. And this one's in Ilkeston. So I think what's actually happened here is someone's bought this at a salvage auction to do it up and they haven't done so or they've started to do the work and then just given up on it and thought they'd move it on. So it's gone through salvage auction a second time. That's my best guess on this. So I'm guessing that's what's happened on that one. But bear in mind, this is an HPI clear car. This car's passed the HPI check. It says it wasn't an insurance write-off. And right here it's going through a salvage auction as a cat s structural write-off now that means that car should be worth about 30 percent less another comment i've had quite regularly in in the last video was that there's nothing wrong with buying a cat s or a cat n and i sort of agreed to that to to a degree there are cars that have a really good quality repair and are put back on the road in a really clean state um, really structurally sound no issues with them whatsoever if you know what you're buying and that the car's got that history and you pay less for it as a result and it's put back perfect condition, no issues. I'm fine with that. Unfortunately, not all of them are put back on the road in the best condition. Sometimes the work's been done on someone's drive. It's not always done by a professional. You know, it's not always the best standard of work that goes on with these things. And as they don't have to have a new MOT or anything like that, Maybe you're several months down the line before you find any issues with it. So it's always buyer beware. Quite often you can buy a Cat S or a Cat N that's been put back on the road and repaired and it's great. What I have a problem with are these unrecorded ones that people are completely unaware of. They do an HPI check on it or they see it sitting there on Auto Trader with a nice big green tick next to it. and think, oh, at least this one's got a decent history, blah, blah, blah. 
And then, you, you know, for the sake of three quid, you go and find out that this happened to it previously. So in the comments of that last video, I did actually have several motor traders coming on and saying that, oh, we sell these all the time, you know, it's a good way of getting some extra margin and blah, 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 is buying an unrecorded write-off, doing it up and selling it on. I've got no problem with that, but I think you should be telling people. I know legally there's probably nothing wrong with it because it passes cap HPI and you can do your cap HPI check and say, oh, well, that's all fine. But to, let's talk about ethics for a second. Is it ethically right to be doing that and not telling people about it? I don't think so. I found this on the uh, Honest John forum, which someone had kindly posted a link to that last video. And there are just a couple of funny things on here I thought you might enjoy. Would I spend 15 minutes watching an unshaven man in a hoodie? Nope. So that's good. I <laughs> enjoyed that one. I thought it was quite funny. I think he's done other videos too. He needs a director though, yes? <laughs> I probably do in all fairness. But yeah, I've, I've found that pretty funny. Hello, I'm up here now. I just wanted to show you this because I had a comment from Big Motoring World who are one of the dealerships that featured in the first video and I thought it only fair to um, share their comments with you. It's one of their cars was featured in that first video. Thank you for highlighting one of our advertised cars in this video. Like most automotive retailers, we use CAP HPI data to ensure our cars have a clean history before putting any vehicle on sale. We've raised this video with CAP HPIs. We're not aware that this was a CAT S as it didn't show on the HPI report and wasn't declared at auction by the vendor. The vehicle's now been immediately taken offline and returned to the auction house. We have a strict policy of never buying or selling vehicles that are CAT S, C, D or N, whether declared or not. As so, we're disappointed to see this car found its way onto our forecourt. After not being picked up by the HPI report and failing to be declared by the vendor, We'll continue to work with our partners to ensure customers can be confident in the quality and history of the cars we buy and sell. And that's come from the social media team at Big Motoring World. So I replied, great. So will you use something other than CAP HPI in future? Now that it's been highlighted that CAP HPI check is basically, basically worthless as demonstrated here. I will do a follow up video and mention your comment in that, although it surprises me that a large motor trader would be unaware of any of this prior to my mentioning it in a video, has this ever come up before? And someone else uh, called Dodgy Cars has said, not the first time you've had this kind of problem. And I've had no response to that. And that was um, that was six days ago. So I just thought it fair to mention it as they did respond. I mean, it looks like these guys turn over quite a lot of cars. Um, I don't know, think what you will. That's the response and I thought it fair to share it. If I were a car dealer and I were found doing this, I could certainly say that I'd done the cap HPI check, so therefore I've done my bit. And legally, I'm sure that's completely fine and dandy, okay? I think they've done their bit as a dealership. They've, they've used the most widely recognized car checking service and it says it's clean. But would I know that this goes on if I were in the trade and in the trade on quite a large scale. I would guess I probably would be aware of it. Hypothetical, because I'm not in the trade. So after all that, let's just have a very, very brief summary. One, I don't think there's anything wrong necessarily with buying a Cat S or a Cat N car. As long as the repair has been done to a really, really good standard, you've been told about it when you buy it, and you've got a significant discount on that car because of it, I think it's absolutely fine. Motor traders are not legally at fault from what I can tell. As long as they're doing a background check on that car, they've done their bit and that's the end of that. The fact that you or I can go onto this website and, and find out more about the car for three quid and there are probably other services out there that are even cheaper than that suggests that ethically, maybe they're not whiter than white. The villains here, the real villains here, in my opinion, are the people in charge. You've got to look at the MIB, you've got to look at the DVLA, you've got to look at the Department for Transport. They're aware of this, they've been aware of it now since at least 2019. That's when I first found things from the press, that first Auto Express article about this. So at least since 2019 they've been aware of it, yet still it continues. Still we've got these cars going through salvage auctions, that are not recorded as write-offs because the insurance companies are choosing not to do it. 
thankfully most of the insurance companies do use the registers properly but not all of them do and they don't have to currently so there needs to be fundamental changes there to the the regulations and rules otherwise this will go on forever anyway just wanted to do a quick update for you guys and i've chucked another couple of examples in there so i hope you've enjoyed it uh, as always give it a thumbs up it's really important the thumbs up on these videos because we want people to see them uh, these are very important videos that people should be aware of in in my book and uh, once again thanks very much to vcheck for pointing this out to me in the first place which gave me the opportunity to make the first video so um, and thanks to everyone that commented and liked and shared because i know lots of you did on that one so thanks very much if you have liked this video guys do consider subscribing uh, lots of other car content on my channel usually much much more light-hearted than this but yeah lots of car ch content on the channel so go and check some of it out maybe this video over here might appeal to you who knows see you next time